Today I'm going to be talking about the IVs and EVs in Pokemon. So I'm going to be talking about the difference between the two. That's all I'm going to focus on today is explaining the difference between the IVs and the EVs. In the next video that I make, I'm going to explain how I actually get the IVs and EVs that I want for each Pokemon. But this one we're just going to focus strictly on what is the difference between the two things. So let's get into it. So first off, I'm going to talk about the IVs first. IVs stand for individual values. And what these are is these are just randomly assigned to your Pokemon when you capture them. And they're kind of like genetics. So when I'm born, I don't get to choose my genes. I just, I get what I get. And that's what I have to work with, right? IVs are the same way in Pokemon. They're just randomly assigned to your Pokemon when it is captured. And you just have to deal with what you have. The difference with EVs, EVs stand for effort values. These are earned by training your Pokemon, so it's kind of like exercising. So the main way that you get EVs in Pokemon is by battling. Anytime you knock a Pokemon out, you get effort values from knocking that Pokemon out. There are other ways to get EVs. Again, I'm going to talk about that more in my next video, but this one I'm just trying to describe the difference between the two. So IVs think like genetics. It's something that you're born with that you can't change. Effort values is like training, so it's like exercising. So for IVs, your IVs can be any number between 0 and 31. And on Sword and Shield, they will be labeled as no good, decent, pretty good, very good, fantastic, and best. And these are what they mean. So no good means that the IV is 0. Decent means it's between 1 and 10. Pretty good, 11 to 20. Very good, 21 to 29. Fantastic is 30, and best is 31. So obviously, you pretty much want your IVs to be best. There are a few cases where you want your IVs to be no good, but those are the two that you really want. You either want best or no good. I'll talk about the difference in a second here. So you can see that decent, pretty good, and very good give you a range, 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 29. There's no way of seeing exactly what that number is. But it really doesn't matter because you don't want any of those IVs. You want either best or no good. Okay, so like I said, almost all the time you want best stats. The only time you'd want no good is like if you are running a Trick Room team. And Trick Room means that the slower Pokemon goes first, right? So in that case, if you're running Trick Room, you want your Pokemon to be as slow as possible. So that's where you might want their speed to be no good so that they have a zero for speed so that they are as slow as possible instead of being best and that way they might be faster than a similar pokemon on a different team other than that you pretty much want your ivs to be best the only other case is if you're getting super competitive and you're getting into some big tournaments you might want to have your special attacking pokemon you might want their attack to be no good so the reason you would want their attack to be no good is because you are using them for their special attack ability so it doesn't matter how good their attack is but attack is used when the game is calculating the damage that is done from confusion and a move like foul play so in order to take the least amount of damage from stuff like that you would want your attack stat to be no good if you are using a special attacking pokemon Okay, so how you see your IVs in Pokemon Sword and Shield, the first thing you need to do is you need to beat Leon, and then after you've beaten Leon, you need to win six matches at the Battle Tower. So the Battle Tower is at the very top of your map. It's this tower right here. It's where you battle Rose, um, and I believe they call it the Rose Tower earlier in the game. So after you've beaten Leon, you need to go to this Battle Tower you need to win six matches at the Battle Tower, and then that will unlock the ability for you to see your IVs. So before that, there's no way of seeing your IVs in Sword and Shield. You have to beat Leon first, and you have to win six matches at the Battle Tower. That unlocks the ability to see your IVs, and then the way that you see them, you just need to open your Pokemon box, and then you click plus on your controller until you see your IVs show up in the top right corner. So you can see this dub wool here. These are its IVs. So it's got each stat, hit points, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. And you can see that he has best for everything except special defense is decent. 
So this is pretty close to what you want, right? You want pretty much everything to be best. I believe double is someone who you would want to use attacks for. You would want to use um, physical attacks. So it wouldn't matter what its special attack is, but you would want everything else to be best. So that's how you see your IVs on Pokemon Sword and Shield. Next, EVs, the effort values. So when you catch a Pokemon, obviously each stat starts at zero EVs. So when I'm talking about the stats, I'm talking about these six things that we just talked about on the last page, the hit points, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Those are your stats. So each stat starts with a zero EV because you haven't trained your Pokemon yet. The way the EVs work is each stat can max out at 252 EVs, and the total EVs cannot exceed 510. So what that means is you cannot max out the EVs for every stat. There's six different stats that max out at 252, and you've got a total of 510 to work with. So what that means is you can max out two stats if you want to, and then you'll have four EVs left over that you can apply to one of the other stats. Now you might be thinking there's actually six that you can apply, but I'll talk about why in a second here that the last two EVs are basically irrelevant. So the way that the EVs work is each stat is increased by one point for the first four EVs. So the first four EVs you put on a stat that boosts that stat by one point. Then after that, you get one more point for each additional eight EVs. So that's why if you max out two EVs, there will be six left over. You can apply four of those to one of your stats, which will boost it by one point, And then you've got two that basically do nothing. So when it says the EVs are out of 510, it's really 508. The last two don't really do anything. So what this means is if you max out a stat at 252, that's going to boost that stat by 32 points. So 31 times 8 is 248, and then that first 4 that you start with. So it's going to boost that stat by 32 points. As you get more comfortable with EVs, you might be thinking, well, why would I just max out two EVs? Maybe I want to spread them around a little bit so my Pokemon's more balanced. There's definitely Pokemon that you might want to do that with. And as you get more comfortable with the EVs, maybe that's something that you start to play around with a little bit more. But when you first start out, here's some common EV spreads that you might want to try. So if you have a Pokemon, like for example, Dragapult, who is very fast and is a strong attacker, you might want to do something like this first EV spread. Just give it 252 attack, 252 speed, and then spend that extra four on hit points. So what this does is it makes that Dragapult as fast as possible and as strong as possible so that it's going to go first in the battle and it's going to do a lot of damage. The opposite side of that is a Pokemon like maybe Charizard who does special attacks. So for a Charizard you might want to do 252 for special attack, then same thing 252 for speed and 4 for hit points. Again these are just kind of some common EV spreads that you might want to start with when you first start EV training and then as you get better Maybe you start spreading them around a little bit more, but this is just something that's good in general. Max out two of the stats so that the Pokemon is doing what you want it to do. Those Charizard and Dragapult are two Pokemon that you want to go first and do a ton of damage. Another example is a Pokemon like Glastrier. So Glastrier is a super slow Pokemon that I would use in Trick Room. So if I'm using a Pokemon in Trick Room, I'm not investing in its speed because I want it to be slow. Because like I said before, Trick Room makes a slower Pokemon go first. So now I have all those EVs that I was investing in speed with the other Pokemon that I can now spend somewhere else. So what you would want to do is you would want to spend those 252 EVs to make Glastier more bulky. So that he's not only strong, but he's also bulky and hard to knock out. So you might do 252 attack so that he's still doing a ton of damage. But then 252 for hit points and then four on either defense or special defense. So this will make him bulky and strong so that you know he can be tough to knock out while also delivering a ton of damage. And the last one here, this is just if you have a Pokemon that you're using for support, like an Incineroar, that 
it's not your main source of damage, but you need it to last as long as possible to continue to give support to your Pokemon who is dealing out a ton of damage. That's where you're just going to want to completely invest in defense or special defense. So you might do something like 252 hit points, 252 defense, and then four on special defense. What I tend to do is I go 252 hit points, and then I kind of evenly spread out the defense and special defense. But again, that's something you can kind of play around with more as you get more comfortable with the EV spreads. And that's the last thing I said here. You know, the more you've done this and the more you get comfortable with it, the more you're going to be able to kind of play around with those EVs and make them, you know, work the way that, that you want them to work. But this is a good place to start. Just start by maxing out two EVs. Basically, you want to figure out how you can get the most out of each Pokemon and you want them to be accomplishing whatever it is that you are expecting them to accomplish on your team. If you're expecting them to be in a support Pokemon and be on the field for a long time, you need to invest in defense. If you're expecting them to just be really fast and powerful so that they can attack first and deal a ton of damage, then you want to do something like these first two. How do you see your EVs in Pokemon Sword and Shield? It's a lot easier than the IVs. You can check your EVs right from the beginning of the game. All you have to do is open your Pokemon box, and then you click on one of your Pokemon, the one that you want to see its EVs, and then you click on Check Summary. Then you just have to go to the right one space here so that you see its stats, and then you press X. So then it'll look something like this. When you press X, this orange part will show up. So the yellow section here is the Pokemon's base stats. So Tyranitar is very well balanced. That's why this yellow part is pretty evenly spread amongst all the stats. If you see a Pokemon like Kartana, Kartana has like no special defense. So this would be like really small and it has really high attack. So it'd be a little bit less balanced. But Tyranitar is a very well balanced Pokemon. That's why the yellow part looks like this. The orange part is your EVs, your effort values. So when you first start, when you first catch a Pokemon, there will just be a little orange circle in the middle. So it won't be branching off towards any of the stats because you have no effort values. As you train in one of the stats, it's going to spread towards that stat. So you can kind of see here, I'll zoom in a little bit. This Tyranitar is trained in attack. It's trained a little bit in speed and a little bit in special defense. So that's what's happening here, but that orange section in the middle, that's showing you your EVs. So while you're looking at this picture here, you might be wondering how many EVs does this Tyranitar have in attack? That's the one thing that's bad about this is you can't see how many EVs this is. You can just see that it's, a, it's extending toward the attack, so you can see that it has some investment in attack. What the game does do for you is when a stat is maxed out, it'll show these stars here. So this Lucario is maxed out in special attack and speed. And the other thing that happens is the orange area becomes white when you've used all 510 EVs. So I can zoom in a little bit here again. You can see that this orange section is now white. That tells you that you've used all 510 EVs. The stars tell you it's maxed out. So you can't see exactly how many EVs you have invested. So that's where you're going to have to find some way to keep track of how many EVs you've given each Pokemon. That's something that I'm going to talk about in the next video. This one, I just purely wanted to talk about what's the difference between the IVs and EVs and how do you see them. So this is where I'm going to conclude this video. But the next one that I do, hopefully in the next couple days here, I'm going to talk about how I actually get the IVs and EVs that I want for each Pokemon. For the EVs, there's a lot of different ways that you can give these Pokemon these effort values. It's not just by knocking Pokemon out. So I'll talk a lot about that. And then with the IVs, if your Pokemon doesn't have the IVs that you want right now, that doesn't mean you just have to trash that Pokemon. There are ways you can fix its IVs. So again, I'm going to talk about that in the next video. So keep a lookout for that. Again, I should hopefully have that out in the next couple days.